Good morning, everybody, and welcome <coughs> to this week's edition of Furman Football Weekly with head coach Clay Hendricks. Paladins coming off of a, a gritty 17-14 win at Chattanooga on Saturday to uh, claim the SOCON's auto bid, at the very least a share of the Southern Conference Championship. And we'll be able to claim that outright with a win over VMI at home this week. We'll talk more about that, including a time change on the kickoff that was just announced a short time ago. Uh, joining coach today are Travis Blackshear and Ben Ferguson. And Furman remains at number two in both of the major FCS polls that were just released this morning. Right now, we'll turn it over to Clay Hendricks for an opening statement and then let Scott Keeler ask the first question. Clay? Okay. Thank you, Dan. Again, as always, appreciate you guys being here. Uh, you know, certainly thrilled with the outcome of the football game Saturday, having a chance to go in against a really, really good Chattanooga team at their place, uh, get a share of the conference championship, which has been our goal, or at least win a conference championship has been our goal from, from the time our season ended a year ago. And uh, I told our team, I actually told them Friday night, you know, talking about you know, it's why they came back was to be in that position. But, you know, coming back didn't actually give you that opportunity. You know, there's a whole lot that's gone into it this year just to get back to that point. But just to be able to see them realize that and how we played. Uh, I mean, as tough a gritty a, a group performance as I can remember at any time. I don't know if I've been part of a, t a game. I probably have been where you felt like you had so many bad things happen to you. And, you know, Coach Vaughn likes to talk about, you know, giving up explosion plays, and then you have those catastrophic plays. And you felt like kind of through that through part of that game, just a lot of catastrophic type things happened. And, uh, but just, you know, how our kids responded. Uh, you know, nobody panicked. Uh, you know, but, but again, just a, a weird series of things that kind of happened. And, and then we, our guys just kind of hung in there and, and found a way to found a way to get it done. So certainly, certainly satisfying. And we we were able to do that. We we're able to celebrate, you know, what they've accomplished Saturday. And and at that point, we've we've moved on. And uh, you know, we know we got two football games. You know, a huge one this weekend that that's going to help us do the things we want to do. You know, we're a little selfish. We don't want to share anything with anybody. And that's kind of our thought right now. And then, you know, we're going to get a chance to play bonus football. Uh, and certainly how we play in these next couple of weeks changes the road that we'll be taking, you know. So, I, I, you know, so we got lots of stuff to play for. But, again, we, I, I made the decision to let them go ahead and present us that Saturday because I thought it was something we'd want, earned and won in that, in that setting. And, like I said, our kids celebrated. It was a great day Saturday, and we moved on. You know, we started back yesterday, had a great day yesterday. Hadn't heard a word about it since then, and nothing to talk about. Uh, our guys are really bright kids. They they totally understand kind of what's out there, what's ahead of them, and you know get get a chance now to turn to a VMI team that's playing their best football. I have great respect for Coach Rocco and his career everywhere he's been. Uh, you can watch the tape; they've gotten better every week. Uh, didn't really know Coach until the media days, uh, but again, just a lot of respect. You cut on the tape and watch them play. So we'll certainly have our work cut out for us. Uh, you know, I came out pretty healthy. Certainly Tyler's situation. Tyler's got a shoulder sprain. You know, I would best way I'd describe it right now is probably week to week. Uh, you know, Tyler came out of that tent and grabbed the ball and started throwing it around and we weren't gonna let him go back in there at that point in time, but uh be remiss if I had Carson Jones and the job he did and how he stepped in and you know, and I I can't I'm not gonna sit here and say this you know, it didn't surprise me at all, but it didn't surprise me in a lot of ways. He's just that's the nature of kind of who he is, how he practices. Our guys have a tremendous amount of confidence in him. He's shown it at practice. And, uh, you know, so it was uh, – like I said, I wouldn't want to throw him in that situation against that defense because, again, they had an outstanding team, and we're certainly fortunate and thrilled to be able to get a win. And, and again, excited to see what the rest of this season holds. Uh, but with that, Scott, we'll take your first question. Coach, I didn't see every football game this weekend, but I went, I'd venture to say the – the one I didn't see was probably the only one where the guy that caught the game on a touchdown set up the first points with a punt block. 
Yeah. Does Wayne Anderson kind of embody every part of this team? And on the punt block, how did he not go off sides and just kind of – how did he – I mean, it looked off sides and it wasn't. I've seen the replay five times. It was. Well, you see, I, he got a great jump on it. I hadn't really just asked him that, but I remember looking at it later. He got a great jump on it. And obviously, you know, he, he you know, just flat out missed the one, you know, against East Tennessee. And uh, Wayne blocked one against VMI last year, you know. And, um, you know, he dislocated a finger in the game. He got it back in, he blocks a punt, and then he makes that catch. And then a great run after the catch. But I think he does. You know, we moved him. He originally was running back, went to receiver, came back to running back. Um, man, it, you know, we talk, you're talking about low maintenance and dependable, which we talk a lot about around here. I mean, he, he embodies that. And uh, just what a great, great guy and teammate. And, and I was really, really, really happy for him as well. Uh, Travis and Ben, can y'all uh, kind of describe how it's been this season for both of you uh, from, you know, where we started to where we are right now as uh, SOCON champs? Uh, I'll start first. It all starts with uh, the preparation. Uh, the coaches uh, done an unbelievable job uh, getting us prepared throughout the week. Um, so we able to play our best football on Saturdays and obviously We've been able to uh, show that, that we've been putting in the work, um, not even just fall camp, but throughout uh, when the season started, when the season ended last year versus uh, UIW. Um, the guys knew what we wanted, and we weren't able to achieve uh, what we would like uh, last year. Obviously, we, we had a good uh, record. Uh, we had a good team. But the guys knew we could do better, and uh, we won the SOCON championship and be able to play further on in the playoffs so uh yeah like Trav said we had um a lot of guys come back and we didn't you know like how we finished last year so everyone coming back and just the preparation and we had like a chip on our shoulder all off season fall camp and honestly every week in preparation we uh just go out there and practice like we want to win and I mean it showed so Coach, I think on post game you said uh, you've been doing this for 38 years and that was about as good a win as you had. Well, what makes this team so resilient week in and week out that they're able to put some bad plays behind and move on to the next one and, and continue to win? Uh, I think they've just been so consistent in everything they do, you know, and, and, and they always practice well. I can't say it's perfect all the time, but just consistency, uh, really, really trust, you know, in each other. Uh, you know, there's some weeks you got to get it done on offense, some weeks you got to get it done on defense to really help the other group out. And I, I thought, like, the kicking game was huge the other day. You know, you look at the numbers, they didn't show up. But, you know, we blocked a punt. We made a field goal. They didn't. Um, I think we had two returns. We started maybe outside the 30. They kicked one out of bounds. We had another, you know, another good return. Uh, Ian kicked every ball in there. And I really thought the fourth quarter was huge, you know. the. Uh, obviously, we scored some points, but we flipped the field on them, you know. And even offensively, when we didn't get points, we made a few first downs. And, you know, Coach Spangler says it all the time, guys, it's it's not a bad thing to punt. You know, we, we pinned them down there. Defense got to stop. And I think the last drive we started at midfield, you know, which was huge. Uh, but I just think that, and, and again, like Travis said, preparation, uh, that's what it's all about. You know, you got to be able to prepare, and our staff, can't say enough about those guys and what they've done. And, uh, you know, just believing in each other. And, uh, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, you're sitting over there and, man, there's some, you know, uh, you know, we lose Hugh. You know, somebody made this comment. Um, you know, if you probably could pick, ask the other team, you can take one off the other team, offense and defense, before the game starts, who do they pull off? They may pull off both number sixes. You know, and, and, you know, so obviously we knew what Tyler meant and and his experience in them. But he was the same way over there on the defensive side of the ball, you know. And, uh, you know, a guy like Jack Rhodes stepping up, you know. It just And you could just go down this. I mean, Travis, you can't see. You know, he had a pin put in his thumb last Friday, a week ago, and they cleared him about an hour before he got on the bus. And they said, if you want to play, you can play. It was obviously so limited practice wise. He wanted. To, he made that pretty clear. He wanted to play. So I don't know. Just a bunch of unselfish guys that uh, had a common goal. You know, I think they realized what they had to do to kind of get there. And still, no guarantees. 
and it certainly hadn't been easy. You know, it, I don't know if anybody's had a tougher road than we've had. You know, you think of the last month and those, especially those three win, road wins we got. Uh, you know, and you know, like I said, then not a whole lot. You know, shakes them just because we we've been in some tough situations. Um, Travis, you've had a chance to kind of, for a rare occasion, to watch some football from the sidelines. Um, can you talk about? Just the way that Ivan Yates has stepped up, I thought he was particularly key on Saturday and a couple of tip aways and just talk about his performance, you know, Saturday and really in the ETSU. Yeah, uh, Ivan, he's been playing good all year. Um, and it doesn't just starts out, um, it doesn't just show on the uh, Saturdays. Uh, as a corner, it's, it's a very tough position to play. We put in, we're put in tough situations. Um, and it goes to how you uh, watch film during the week. Um, practice, you have to practice. You can't really take a day off at corner or it'll come back and bite you quick. So I would say his preparation, um, Coach Mainza, uh he does a good job of being out there with us, going through the film with us, uh, giving us tips and reminders like how, to, how should we go about what we need to do on uh, Saturdays and obviously throughout uh, the week on practice. So I would say uh, his preparation, and then also um, we, me and Micah, um, we push him. Like we push each other. The, we obviously want to do better. Um, so I would just say his uh, preparation. He locked in this year, and he's been playing really well. For Ben and Travis, you guys coming off this ranked win, riding high, you know, a lot of momentum. What do you guys talk about among the experienced guys on the team to not have a letdown in the final games of the season? Uh, I would say the guys like we we talk about it. We see we see everything um, that's going on social media, um, the expectations, but we know everything is is you have to earn it. Uh, it's never given. So you, uh, we have that mindset. Uh, we we know what we want to accomplish. We know uh, where we want to be at, and obviously we're trying to make that happen. Um, so that's really. Yeah, like I said earlier, like a lot of guys came back for a reason, and um, we did have something to prove, and we uh, we we got it done. But um, yeah, just before the game, we were. Uh, I was talking to some of the linemen, and uh, actually it was uh, Pearson Toomey, and I was like, "Well, man, this is what you know. This is this is it. You know, this is what we came back, or this is what you came back for. You know, let's get it done." And you know, we both rode with that, and the whole team really did, and got behind it, and figured out a way to get it done. Ben, what does it feel like to be a one of the more inexperienced players on one of the more experienced teams that I have ever seen? I mean, like. On a day to day, what what does that feel like? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm the young guy. I've uh, you know I just tried to step in and uh, you know do all I can. We had a uh, Wayne Anderson in the receiver room earlier this year, and then you know he had some injuries and you know went over to running back. So me and uh, the freshman Colton Hinton, we both had a you know big job to step up. And I mean, I mean, it's awesome. We have a lot of older guys that kind of took us in when we both got here and obviously Colton came in not too long ago but I came in a year ago and I just it's just family in there I mean all the guys just corral around you and you really don't really feel like a young guy even though you really are so Clay when you and I were doing our pregame interview and, and the, the meeting and, and talk we were having before that on Thursday one of the things you mentioned was that you're, you you said your receivers needed to make more contested catches, and, and Saturday I thought we saw that. Ben made a big one on that last drive, a, a third down conversion. Kendall made a nice adjustment on a deep ball. I mean, and technically even Travis's was contested that Absolutely. interception that he made. But you, you kind of, I'm sure you challenged them, but you, you mentioned it to me. Just your your thoughts on how they responded to that. Well, obviously they responded, you know, and I, I say that, you know, Drew Dudzik in that room, coaching them. 
Drew does a terrific job challenging those guys. He challenges them every day of practice. Uh, I think uh, I think us Roper were talking about Ben's catch. I don't I don't think people you need to look at that catch on that conversion down there. <laughs> you know, he said I'm not going to say that was his best catch of the year because of the one he, I guess he made at Sanford. But uh, but it but he does a lot of those things at practice, so it doesn't. I don't think it surprises anybody. Kendall's play was huge. Um, I thought, you know, certainly Colton the first touchdown. And man, what a what a throw, you know. A young guy that you know, and really you're talking about Dan, that was freshman to freshman, a redshirt freshman to a true freshman. And then Ben so we don't have a lot of those young guys in, in those kinds of roles. But uh no, I mean I think it's like anything else and I even told our team I I would like to even think offensively. I don't know if I've sensed a little bit of a little bit of burden, you know, with with a you know a little bit of. I think one of the things kind of been most pleasing to me, and I asked Hunter, I don't know, but you know, when, it's been a while probably since somebody was picked to win the league and wins the league, you know. But you kind of carry that, and, and maybe we're pressing a little bit at times. And I told him even yesterday, I said, hey, I just like to see us cut it loose and go go play because I think we're, you know, you've heard me say, oh, you felt like we left some points on the field. We're playing so well defensively. Uh, you know, again, I think our best football is still ahead of us. We just got to do the things that gives us a chance to go play our best. Uh, Coach, uh, you're going to be playing a VMI team that was picked to be last, but they have, like you were saying earlier, have really shown a lot of moxie. And actually, this past week came back and scored 17 in the fourth quarter against ETSU and was able to hold them off to get the win. Um, what's your thoughts about this team? Uh, it's like a, it's like they have a no give up and uh, are just playing you know, with nothing to lose. Well, these guys will tell you. I told our, our, our group after practice yesterday, I said, you know, I watch teams and I watch the way they play. Uh, I think their kids are so similar to our kids. And when I say that, it's just kind of their makeup. You know, they go to a challenging place. Uh, and I know, I just know, you know, I don't live, I hadn't lived in that world, but I've lived in that world. But they, they're challenged every day in different ways. And you can kind of see it in how they play. And, uh, and I think you bring a guy like Coach Rocco in there. And, you know, Scott Walkenheim did a phenomenal job. Uh, but you can see, bring Coach Rocco in there. And, I, I've, you know, he took over a lot of places that hadn't been very good uh, and, and turned them kind of all around. And, I mean, you can just see it. He's a defensive guy by trade. But you can just see it in how they play. And you can see them getting better. Uh, you know, so the – I. I thought they should have beaten Chattanooga two weeks ago. They had a bunch of opportunities to do it at their place. And, you know, we all know that's a challenging place to go play sometimes with some different things you deal with. So I, the tape kind of speaks for itself. You know, they came back and, you know, I mean, East Tennessee kind of shot themselves in the foot quite a bit. But, you know, good teams find a way to take advantage of that. So I certainly have utmost respect for them. You know, we'll need to have a great week of prep. And uh, But, you know, I think our guys are excited to go play too. And, you know, have a chance to be back at home. It seems like we've been on the road all year. Uh, but it's good to be back at home. So, you know, it'll be our senior days. We'll get a chance to honor honor a, a big group of seniors. Um, but uh, but like I said, the, the tape just clearly shows you. You know, you watch tape and you'll have their respect. They, they do a lot of things. They can run it. They can throw it. Have good players. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll have to play really well to have a chance to go get go win that thing outright. Coach, um, it, reading some national pundits and stuff about playoff resumes for different teams, um, it seems like the Kennesaw win is just kind of thrown. It, like, it doesn't matter um, almost. Could you speak to the challenge of facing that team in terms of not knowing what they're going to throw out there and reiterate the fact that they have more scholarship or they have the opportunity to have more scholarships than an FCS team, so maybe that should take on a little bit more worth than it's getting credit for. And also, based on this weekend and what you're seeing, do you think Chattanooga belongs in the playoffs? Well, you know, to answer your first question, you know, I you've heard me say this. I think college football is all about matchups, you know, and there's just certain teams, you know. I think it's any challenging to play a team that has done nothing but win. That is in their DNA. And that was in Kansas DNA. I think they've lost seven games in the history of their stadium. You know, and it's a really odd. I know Brian well, but you know they were dealing with some odd. You know, they wouldn't. 
you know, Sam Houston, who's now full-fledged FBS, and I think they were up 21-7 at the half. You know, I know they hadn't won a lot of games, but I think the Air Force beat them 13-3. You know, so it's just – and, again, you know, they were sitting guys, but, they, you know, we saw their best ones and got their best shots. So, I, I just think every case is a little different. They took Chattanooga to the wire you know, the, the, the week before that. So, I, I don't know. You know. People try to – I don't compare scores a whole lot. But, you know, you can go look and see where they stand statistically, defensively, in the country, in different places, you know. I, I just think that's stuff I kind of try to pay attention to, you know. And how are you against good, good teams? You know, how'd you play? Uh, so, I, I think that – I think that's a little bit – you know, a little bit how that works. And your second question was – Oh, about Chattanooga. I, you know – uh, I think I kept Chattanooga exactly where I had them ranked the week before. They, you know, they played the number two ranked team in the country and, and lost in, in the last two minutes of the game. Um, you know, I, I think it's a little bit, you know, it's funny. I'm a voter. You know, I'm a voter in the FCS and uh, coaches poll, and uh, Drew Kronick and I are two of the voters. You know, and I'll, I'll rotate off after this year. Um, but I also think it's interesting to watch. You know, I watched earlier, I think I've said this, you know, Mercer. I don't know what they were at the time, but they had lost to us and Ole Miss, you know, who's top ten. Dropped out of the poll, you know, and I see three lost teams, FCS, lose two spots, you know. So, I, you know, at the end of the day, I, it's not like I've told people, just let us play our schedule. Let us play our schedule. We'll sort it out. First, Chattanooga, absolutely playoff caliber team, absolutely. You know, they got to buy and they got to go to Alabama. I think a lot of teams haven't even played. A, they'd probably have another loss if they played an FBS team like we play. Um, but a, absolutely, you know, it, it'll be it'll have to shake itself out. Obviously, I think uh, is it is it Mercer Sanford this week? You know, I mean, I think Mercer. You know, if, I think it's their last game. I think they have a bye the last week. Uh, I think the Sanford team. I just think in each of those cases, losses. You know, there were, there were some kind of weird circumstances that's part of the game just like ours would have been saturday uh but chattanooga absolutely i think they're they're that caliber of team now you know if it, you know if they end up seven and four you know how many seven four teams how many i you know that i don't know um uh, you know that that i don't know but absolutely i think you know i look at them and a year ago you know and and i think they had a chance to wait to play themselves in last year and didn't but uh, but absolutely talent-wise, I think they are. Ben, building on a little bit of what you <clears throat> talked about earlier, uh, a year ago you and I believe Caleb Williams were only two first-year guys to play all year. What's been your biggest progression from last year to this year in terms of your overall game? What's allowed you to elevate your game uh, this year and also – Clay Mazza just tipped me off. How he said Carson uh, uh, is your roommate on the road. Give us a little insight on 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 him. What do you what do you see in him? Uh, yeah. So to answer the first question, uh, last year I was a little bit like I had a nagging injury with my quad, but uh, now it's all healed. And I mean, I really just the the like Wayne Anderson when he went down and I got and I had the opportunity to step up that. I mean, that really elevated my, like, not elevated my game, but it helps me out a lot with, you know, with, hit, with, let me restart, with everything going on and him going down, I had to elevate my game, so that's, that's really what happened. And yeah, Carson, he's uh, my roommate, we came in here, he's actually my roommate all the time, not on the road, but all the time, and um, we came in first summer, and I actually asked him, I was like, you want to be my roommate? Not knowing anything about the guy, nothing, but me and him both, you know, just set it off right right when we saw each other. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he stepped up this week, and it was awesome. I mean, it's – me and Carson, we have a, obviously a little connection from the roommate, but, I mean, just seeing him step up in that big situation, become a leader for that last uh, second half and everything, I mean, it was awesome to see, and all the buddies back – Back at the place, we're enjoying it. So it was it was awesome to see. Coach Tyler, of course, goes out uh, after that the third series, and Carson uh, comes in a, at that point. How much practice time did he have? And, and you try to get your backup quarterback during the course of the week. Did you know that that might exist? And uh, do you change philosophically to a certain extent with his skill set versus Tyler's? Well, those good questions. You know, uh, 
Uh, Justin Roper does a phenomenal job with those guys. That room is a – just to sit in that room sometimes, all those guys, even the young guys in there, it, that's a fun group to be around. But, you know, I, uh, Carson's taken half the reps, and there's probably some weeks maybe he takes more than half the reps. You know, and one of the things Justin has done with him is we go Wednesdays, we go two-minute good on good. And you know what? That's like against our defense. Uh, now, we're not letting – obviously not letting the rushers get to him. Uh, even if they get to him, we don't let them get to him. But, you know, every other week he rolls Carson in there with those guys. And uh, I try to tell you, he's probably probably had more success than Tyler did in those type situations uh, against our own defense. I was asked – somebody asked me, maybe it was after August, you know, Coach, who of the young guys – because we had so many old guys who, – who of the young guys back or – uh, have just really taken another step. You know, it's funny, Ben was one of those guys. I thought Ben was being, you know, he was dealing with being a freshman. He was a little bit hurt last year. Probably got forced in the situation, but he's just such a different guy this year. And I, But I mean, they said Carson was the guy just based on his progression. You know, I looked it up. Carson, six years of football now, the six teams he's been on, the last six teams, he's, he's 71 and eight. Uh, you know, and he was a, almost an 80% high school completion guy. You know, and, and I think our guys just have a ton of confidence in him. Now, you know, Tyler goes down, um, half the play sheet's gone. Because, uh, you know, quite frankly, we were planning on using his feet a lot. Uh, not say we wouldn't do some of the same with Carson, but they're a little bit different skill set. I think they both can do everything. Uh, I think. You know, I think Carson, his ability to stretch the field and do some things is kind of exciting probably to a lot of people. He's such a calm presence, as, you know, I, which is probably great in that situation that he was in because that's, that's just who he is, you know, and he's, uh, but he's a good athlete. And, and uh, so, you know, it'll change a little bit, but, you know, we really won't change. But I, I think he's been really – well. you think about it the last – he really became our backup last year about halfway through the year, maybe a little more, about halfway, maybe a little bit through halfway of the year. So he had all of those last year. Certainly he's had – he's been with Justin Elms this entire time. I guess he wouldn't have been here the first spring. But Tyler wasn't here that first spring either. Uh, and, and Tyler's been great for him. So, uh, you know, accurate, strong arm. You know, I, you know, I think probably his just decision making is one of his strengths. And, and he is a confident guy. So it'll, you know, it'll, it'll kind of be fun to see. I mean, I'd love to have Tyler there, and we'll get Tyler back. Uh, but, uh, but I, you know, I, I certainly he showed the situation wasn't too big for him the other day. Um, Coach, could you just talk about um, VMI? Uh, they, I, I know Coach Rocco kept, I think, his coordinator, one of his coordinators around and, and kind of just simplified things, maybe on defense and then on offense, they've got a running back in Hunter Rice, who I think is one of the more underrated running backs in the league. Can you just talk about the challenges of facing facing? Yeah, they did. You know, the offense coordinator stayed. Uh, you can still see bits and pieces of the old stuff, you know, where they spread them out. But uh, you also see them trying to be downhill, control the ball, protect our defense a little bit. Uh, got a really good group of receivers. Uh, I think the offensive line has, has played well. You know, one of the things I look at, you know, they've stayed pretty healthy all year, uh, which has allowed them to continue to get better. Um, and, it, yeah, the Rice kid, I mean, we recruited him a little bit out of high school. And in fact, I think he and maybe X, Xavier, high school teammates, uh, you know, had a big day against Chattanooga. He popped a long run. You know, they, they've kind of gotten in some wildcat stuff the last couple of weeks. And, I don't know for certain if Chattanooga was the first time they had shown that, but they continued with it last week against East Tennessee. And then defensively, you know, they're multiple enough. They can give you a bunch of different looks. Uh, playing really good solid defense. Again, I, I just know guys like like Coach Rocco, you know, I think that's his background and uh, you know they're gonna be they're gonna be good over there. You know, he he comes across to me as a Bobby Johnson kind of guy just from, from being around him a little bit of the time I was. And I think he's a really good fit there. Uh, I think he's bought into what the place is about and the challenges that are there. Uh, I think he's one of the best punters in the country. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a, they're, they're a solid bunch, really, in all areas. This one's for uh, 
Travis and then Coach as well. You mentioned celebrating Senior Day, and I'm curious, what are some of the main qualities that this senior class has that permeate through the rest of the guys and set the foundation for the program? You want to go first? Uh, this this senior class is is special. Um, the guys it's just it's just a great group of great group of guys, uh, teammates, um, and on and off the field, like knowing that they will be someone you could uh, rely or uh, call upon uh, later on in life, um, just to chat up, chat, it, um, talk about this this season here. For example, like it's gonna be times where we come back to the games and just see that uh, 2023 SoCon um, banner on the wall. And just knowing that we left uh, left a mark, uh, left a legacy at this um, university for this program, for this team, and know that we we given it all, we gave it all, and one of the main reasons why we came back because we wanted to, we we left, we didn't leave it all. Um, everybody had a little bit more to give, and we were able to get a good start on that. Obviously, the job is not finished, so we're gonna continue to. Uh, Keep building this legacy. Keep writing this story uh, week after week, and obviously the goal this week. Uh, we got VMI. They're doing. Uh, they're a pretty good team, so uh, we gonna treat every every uh, opponent as if uh, they're the same. Um, so the goal this week is to go one and zero. I'd say you know in the age of college football now, uh, you know we got a, a kind of a mixture of, of even the old guys. You know. You know, Matt Stoke has been here seven years. Uh, you know, Matt came in with with me, came back. He was in first class, you know. Um, but I think a combination of that, guys that didn't have to come back. I mean, Matt's one of those guys, he, you know, he, he's, uh, you know, he's scared. They got to put him back together every week, you know. Had a bunch of different here, but tough, you know. And, I, you know, I think that game the other day kind of summed it up. That's kind of who this group is. Uh, there's a bunch of really, really, you know, we have a lot of really bright kids at Furman. Uh, we got a bunch of really, really smart, bright guys that have great goals. Later on, they're going to do great stuff. Uh, but you know, they, they, they. I think they value Furman and what it, what it has done for them and can do, will continue to do for them. Uh, they love to play football. Uh, I think they love to be around each other. And and really, if we, you know, we want the kids who, you know, value the school, love to play football. You know, and that's a. Probably a rare combination now. Um, and again, I think a bunch of unselfish guys. You know, I just, I could go down the list of guys um, who they just want us to get it done. You know, and if somebody else has to do it instead of them, I think they're good with that. And I think that's just probably the thing that stood out to me most. Just, uh, they're just fun to be around with, they're fun to go to practice with. And, you know, <laughs> You know, Coach Sheridan told me a long time ago about recruiting. You know, you better when you're recruiting. You know, recruiting's a choice. You better like them just as much on Tuesday as you do on Saturday when they're playing well for you. And I love being around our guys every day. You know, I just, I just do, and 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 they're certainly fun to be with on Saturday. And and again, we're we're never going to be the most talented group, and we're not. But uh, but you know, we wouldn't have won a championship without talent. We got talent, and. Uh, but they just they play really well together. They use their talents, and uh, and they've been they've been great leaders for the young guys. And I, I think that's the thing that probably stands out to me most about them. This kind of goes around, comes around time all year long. Clay, you've been saying that who we're playing this week, they're, they're better last week than they were before, and they're going to be better, and we better be better too. When you look at the schedule, and everybody's going. Oh, gotta go to play at Sanford. Gotta go, you know. Gotta go at Western. Gotta go at Chattanooga. Well, right now, VMI looks a lot more threatening than they did a month ago. It's kind of just a. Kind of, kind <laughs> no, of I I totally agree with. Go go pull the tape from a month ago and watch them, and then watch the last week or the week before. Absolutely, you know. And I think again, that's credit to their kids and it's credit to their staff. You know that they've continued to to get better and, and I'm with you, you know, and you go to, I remember going to Cullowhee's biggest game in 40 years in Cullowhee. Last week, her biggest game in Chattanooga in 
however many years. And, you know, that's okay. We want to be in those kinds of games. And, you know, as we said, we've, uh, you know, it goes back, we talk about our kids, you know, just the consistency we've showed on the road. Uh, you know, I think sometimes we're as good there as we have been because, I, cause I, again, I think our guys, the focus and preparation has been, been pretty soon. We're getting credit to our, our assistant coaches for just the job they've done to get those guys ready to play every week. Travis, I had to laugh in, in the post game when Marcus asked you if you considered staying in the end zone on the interception, taking a knee, and you thought about two seconds and said no. And, and, and then, of course, you know, poke a little fun at you for the conditioning after being out a week and all of that stuff. But um, <coughs> take me through diagnosing that play on the fly. Because they, they tried two trick plays, yeah. and, and we diagnosed both of them. So, so take me through diagnosing that play on the fly that ended up with you getting that interception in the end zone, which proved to be obviously a big moment in the game. Yes, sir. So um, first, I really I went through my uh, my reads, um, took my uh, read steps how I was supposed to. Um, I saw the receiver or the running back uh, go in motion, and then it looked a little weird because the receivers had took like um, they didn't come off the ball. How receivers come off the ball when they know they about to run a route. So it was a little. I was a little iffy, so I just stayed, waited a little second um, before I did anything. And then I saw the, uh, I put my eyes in the backfield, saw the uh, running back toss the ball to another receiver, I think. And then I just see him, I'm I'm running back, so I'm looking for the ball, I'm tracking the ball, see what a, uh, see what a running back trying to throw the ball, and obviously he was trying to throw it to the uh, inside uh, go route. Jack was able to get up under him, but the receivers, I think, he tried to go up over the top of Jack and uh, make a make a catch, but it happened so he like tipped it up, and I just happened so to be in the <laughs> be right there where the ball ended up. Obviously, a big turning point um, in the game, and um, it was I was I was a little gas. I was um, <laughs> I was, <laughs> but I knew. Uh, I knew I, tr I wanted to make a play. Uh, obviously, I would have liked if I could have scored on that play. It would have been about a 105-yard return, yeah. but probably would have had to take like two series off after that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, uh, it was uh, a good uh, good play by, I, I say, a good play. Um, obviously, my first game um, coming off of surgery, um, I was very happy um, with that. Being able to help the team. Yeah. Well, Hunter Reed will tell you collegiately, you could have returned at 105 yards. You only got credit for 100. Yeah. They don't do it like they do in the NFL. <laughs> but just to, to follow up on something you said, because we hear all the time as a, as a defensive back, don't get your eyes in the backfield. Don't get your eyes in the backfield. But you said you got your eyes in the backfield. So obviously, this was an exception to that rule. Yeah. Um, some or, or were you lucky and it worked out? I would say, uh, I don't even know how to. Do it. <laughs> I was just fortunate, very fortunate uh, to be able to make the play. Um, yeah. Obviously, we had to stop them from scoring, so we got the offense back the ball. That was that's what the goal was. Uh, Coach, as I always uh, talk to you about, is the red zone. Y'all went two for two this weekend, uh, scoring on uh, both your times in there, and then you held Chattanooga for just the one time that they was able to get in there. Talk about how you're just co constantly getting better in the red zone, both in offense and also uh, your defense, keeping people out. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I thought we started the game really well, you know, and, uh, you know, we get stopped. You know, we get, I don't know where we actually got to. And, you know, we, 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 had, a, we had a middle bus turn the guy loose on a counter play, I think on a second and five, and then had a third down. And really, is that when we missed Ben? I think Ben could stumble a little bit out of his break. Had a chance really for a pretty good play there. And then had the fourth down play, and, and Tyler missed, I guess, Colton, you know, there. And then uh, maybe one of those. But I thought we started, you know, we started pretty well, you know. Yeah, you, know, you get a red zone, can you run the football? I mean, because if you can run the football, it, it creates lots of opportunities, opportunities for you. Obviously, the field shrinks. Uh, 
But no, I, and I just knew that game. Some, somebody asked me the game, you know, is it going to be a shootout? I said, I, I'll be really surprised if it's a shootout. You know, I just said two, both defenses are too good. Uh, you know, unless somebody just turns it over a bunch, you know, which they didn't. So uh, I, I think it's continuing to. Um, I still think you got, you know, you got to be balanced. You're not going to cram it down everybody's throat there, but having the ability to run the ball. Uh, you know, we have a number of weapons. Certainly, Mason Plines become kind of a guy. He had a couple of big catches in that game, and and certainly your quarterback having the ability to get get there. And you know, and and quite frankly, we're planning on using Tyler a lot in that area. And then when, when he goes, you know, goes out, we. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'd be probably not telling you the truth if we didn't spend the better part of the second quarter figuring out exactly, all right, this is what we're going to do, you know, making the adjustments, adjusting the call sheet a little bit. Uh, that there and probably even the halftime, you know, and um, just just because, like I said, we threw there were a few more curves thrown in that game. And then, and then the helicopter pass, you know, uh, yeah, I'd be lying. I mean, and Coach Vaughn said it. To, he said it about our defense. You know, they came running off after that play, and he said, you know, for about thirty seconds, they had this look at them, about them. You know, and I, 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 I can't tell you it didn't cross my mind. Maybe this is just not meant to, meant to be. Uh, but we moved on, and and uh, you know, kids responded. But uh, you know, we've left some points on the field this year. I don't know if it's necessarily been not good in the red zone, but. Uh, you know, we're still – there's some things we got to do better. We can run the ball better. We, we had our – we got away from it a little bit because of the way the game went, especially in the fourth quarter. But I think that's something we got to still continue to get better at. You know, we'll get uh, – Kendall Thomas is back. Grant Robinson's practicing. So we may get both those guys back this week. And uh, kind of a little bit surprised Grant's coming back. You know, he's out there going against their defense a little bit later last week and yesterday, which will be – you know, mine Hicks has done some great stuff back there. I think a lot of stuff mine does you don't see. Uh, but uh, you know, so I were getting getting a few guys healthy back there, and that, that certainly you know creates a few more options for us. Uh, you know, going forward. Coach, you alluded to this a little bit uh, earlier, but I did want to. There's so many heroes on Saturday, but going back and watching the watching the game again <clears throat> um, after a tough day that was the only thing tough about it, well. A rough day. The only thing rough about the Western game was special teams. Right. And I thought a key play on uh, Saturday was Ryan Levy's punt that was down at seven. Yeah. You get it back at the fifty, you go down and score the winning game with a touchdown. Uh, that that group has really uh, made great improvement since that Western game. Yeah. Well, they really haven't. You know, really the Western game is the only time I could really say I thought it wasn't very good. And you know, and it was. You know, he, he and Ian both had one punt, and then you know he dropped snap. You know, on, on the X point, but but again, I, you know, we made field goal. They didn't. You know, like we said, and and certainly, you know, they were coming after punts. Uh, you know, and so coach did a great job, both protection wise and you know, a little bit. It's just, you know, you know who the unblocked hat is, and you got to beat him with the off time. Uh, so you know, great job of, of Ryan doing that, and he ends continuing to kick the ball well and. And, uh, and again, we're doing a good job covering, so we'll, we'd like to continue to build upon that. That group's kind of building their own little identity. I think now they, they think they can go block every kick. Uh, you know, I think we got more of those kinds of guys that can go do that. And so, you know, we'll look at this week, see there's opportunity. I know, I know VMI is a heck of a punter. Um, but uh, they'll, they'll need to play well. And again, that's how we have to win games. Well, because of time considerations, we need to get into wrap-up mode here. So, Coach, I'll just ask you for a final thought. Well, just again, uh, we moved on yesterday. Had a really good day of practice. Uh, today's our off day for our players. You know, spend most of the day as we started yesterday. You know, prepping for for VMI. Um, you know, get a chance to honor seniors this week. Uh, hope it's not the last time we play in Palin Stadium, but you never know. So you, you got to make the most of it, and uh, but we'll need to go have a great week of practice starting there tomorrow. And um, you know we're not going to change anything. You know we'll we'll still do our good on good, and um, you know I, I you did notice a little more of a pep and step yesterday. Uh, uh, just just I, I don't know. You know you need it's great to have some good things happen. It's, it's okay to celebrate and have a little fun. You know in the grind of a season, and we've had you know. 
we enjoy we celebrate wins and certainly that was a, that was a great one we've moved on and got got bigger things ahead uh, but again just uh, excited for the opportunity to see where we can take the rest of this season and and it'll start by playing well this week all right coach thank you very much just a reminder, something that I alluded to at the beginning, uh, it has been out on social media now, but the kickoff time for Saturday has been moved back a half an hour, so we will kick at 1.30 instead of 1 p.m. So 1.30 kickoff at Paladin Stadium. It's Senior Day. It's Military Appreciation Day. So a lot going on. Uh, the uh, game will be broadcast on ESPN uh, Plus, and then, of course, the radio broadcast on the Fan Upstate begins with the Pepsi countdown to kickoff now at noon for the 130 kick. So we hope to see you in the stadium and um, see uh, what's next for Clay Hendricks and his football team. Thank you to Clay, thank you to Travis, Ben for being here, and for all of us at Furman, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you. So long everybody, this has been a Hunter Reed and Jeff Schatzel production. <laughs>